Hello, and thank you for viewing another entry in the Indiana University Radiology Video Education Series. This video was designed to assist in the performance and interpretation of a single contrast pediatric upper GI fluoroscopic exam. No actual patients were used in the creation of this instructional video. All persons participating in the video were unpaid volunteers. No financial disclosures. Pediatric upper GI fluoroscopic exams are one of the most commonly performed pediatric fluoroscopic studies. Indications for this exam may include abdominal pain, epigastric discomfort, nausea and vomiting, upper GI bleeding, weight loss or failure to thrive, suspected intestinal malrotation, abdominal masses, or chronic or recurrent respiratory disease. The upper GI examination can be used to diagnose a variety of different conditions, some of which are listed on the following slide. To adequately prepare a patient for this exam, it is optimal that neonates and infants do not eat for two to three hours prior to exam. Older infants and children do not eat for four hours prior to exam, and all older children do not eat for six to eight hours prior to exam. Barium is the preferred contrast agent for use in this exam. If aspiration is suspected, a water-soluble contrast such as isoview should be used. Gastrographin can be used in older children with suspected GI leak or perforation. However, gastrographin is contraindicated in neonates and infants due to the high risk of gastroesophageal reflux disease and aspiration in this age group. Of note, the vast majority of pediatric upper GI fluoroscopic exams are single contrast. Step 1. Obtain AP and lateral scout images of the upper abdomen to help identify areas of potential false positives during the exam. Here is an example of AP and lateral positioning. Step 2. Obtain AP and LPO supine static fluoroscopic images of the barium-filled esophagus after ingestion of barium contrast. If the patient is at risk for aspiration, use diluted barium or low osmolar contrast agent. If perforation is suspected, use a water-soluble contrast, not gastrographin. Try to avoid ingestion of large amounts of contrast, as this can later obscure the ligament of trites. Here's an example of left posterior oblique, or LPO, positioning. Step 3. Obtain a static fluoroscopic image of the contrast-filled stomach in the AP supine position. Here is a static fluoroscopic image of this step. Step 4. Roll the patient into the right lateral decubitus with the patient's right side against the table position and obtain static fluoroscopic images of the stomach as the contrast material moves towards the pylorus and first portion of the duodenum. This should help confirm the retroperitoneal location of the normally rotated duodenum, as well as the normal height of the duodenal jejunal junction. Here is an example of right lateral decubitus positioning. Here is a static fluoroscopic image demonstrating the normal height of the duodenal jejunal junction with the patient in the right lateral decubitus position. Step 5. As the contrast enters the first portion of the duodenum, roll the patient into the AP supine position and obtain static fluoroscopic images of the contrast passing through the duodenal C loop. The first and second portions of the duodenum should be to the right of the vertebral bodies, and the duodenal jejunal junction should be to the left of the left vertebral pedicles. Here is a static fluoroscopic image demonstrating the normal appearance of the duodenal C loop with the patient in the AP supine position. Step 6. Continue to follow the passage of contrast through the entirety of the duodenum with AP static fluoroscopic images. Additional lateral images demonstrating contrast at the duodenal jejunal junction can confirm duodenal jejunal junction height. Step 7. If clinically warranted, a single overhead AP radiograph can be obtained after the procedure to ensure passage of contrast into the remainder of the small bowel. In summary, obtain a lateral and AP scout, then obtain static images of the contrast-filled esophagus in the AP and LPO positions. Next, obtain static images of the contrast-filled stomach in the AP supine position. 
roll the patient into the right lateral decubitus position and follow the contrast to the pylorus. As the contrast enters the first portion of the duodenum, roll the patient into the AP position and continue to follow the bolus into the jejunum. If clinically warranted, a single AP overhead radiograph can be obtained at the end of the exam. The following slides demonstrate examples of some common pathologies diagnosed with this exam. In this case, note that the duodenum never crosses to the left of the vertebral bodies. This is consistent with intestinal malrotation. In this case, you can clearly see the large hiatal hernia. In this case, you can see the failure of contrast to pass through the pylorus, which was shown to be pyloric stenosis on subsequent ultrasound exam.